AP Biology, Chapter 41, Animal Nutrition, Part 4. The duodenum. Remember that the duodenum is the first part of the three parts of the small intestine, where most absorption and digestion takes place. The most digestion of the small intestine takes place in the duodenum. The most absorption in the jejunum and ileum. If you remember, there's a trick, DJ Illin, to uh, remember the three parts. Now this kind of shows you all the how everything's all set up. The liver, the gallbladder, and the pancreas are all involved with digestion. And as you can see here, there's a duct or a tube that leads from these organs to the small intestine. Basically what happens here is the acid chyme, which has the food mixed in with the acid, and pepsin, the enzyme that breaks down proteins, is uh, squirted into the uh, duodenum. Remember this was called the pyloric sphincter and it opens up and lets a little food uh, from the stomach and the small intestine a little bit at a time. All right, so the pancreas is going to be secreting most of our uh, digestive enzymes for breaking down our food into smaller monomers and we're going to learn about some of those enzymes in a minute. Here we have the liver. The major digestive function of the liver is to produce bile and bile will help emulsify fats that we'll talk about later. Also if you remember the acid uh, produced by the uh, parietal cells of the um, stomach needs to be neutralized once it gets into the small intestine. So even though it's acidic in the stomach, it's not going to be acidic in the small intestine, and that's going to be the result of uh, bases being secreted by the pancreas to neutralize the acid. Duodenum is the major place for digestion in mammals. All right, pancreas, you should write this down, produce hydrolytic enzymes, uh, especially these two. We got peptidases for proteins and amylases, and we'll talk about this in a minute. Also, the other thing that you have to know about pancreas is it produces buffers or alkaline, basic, non acid, higher than 7 pH solutions, rich in bicarbonate, that uh, neutralizes the acid. So, pancreas, once again, produces hydrolytic enzymes for digestion and produces buffers to neutralize acids from the stomach. So we have a fairly complete understanding of what the, uh, the uh, pancreas does now. The pancreas, uh, well, let's see if you can remember this. We'll pause for a second. The two purposes for digestion for the pancreas are to produce enzymes and to produce bicarbonate to neutralize the acid. The one for homeostasis of blood glucose is to produce gluco glucagon and insulin for maintaining sugar homeostasis in the blood. All right, so let's take a look here. There's a lot of, uh, don't worry about the circle part here. I'm just gonna use my cursor to circle the important stuff. Let's go ahead and start here with the uh, esophagus. Now, there are some that you have to know and you might wanna make a basic table Okay, you don't have to put everything on this table, but you should have a basic understanding of what goes on here. All right, so the first enzyme that you already uh, should know that we've already talked about is salivary amylase in red, and that's going to be produced by the salivary glands of inside your mouth to break down starch into sugars. That's where chemical digestion starts, and that's the only enzyme involved in your mouth. In your stomach, the major enzyme that's involved, that only one that you have to know, is pepsin. And remember, it starts off as pepsinogen, that's the inactive zymogen, and then becomes activated by hydrochloric acid folded in the proper shape. So that's pepsin. So, so far, we only have amylase, salivary amylase from the mouth, breaking down starch, and pepsin for proteins. You kind of remember that P, pepsin, P, po protein. All right, now this gets a little more complicated. And as you can see, the small intestine, a lot of stuff going on. A lumen is the inside of something, the space inside something. So when I say lumen of small intestine, I mean, if you can imagine the circle is the cross-section of a small intestine, the lumen would be the inside space here. This is the lumen. Over here we have epithelium of the small intestine, the brush border. That would be the edge of the small intestine right there. All right, so in the lumen of the small intestine, we're going to have pancreatic amylase active. This is for carbohydrates. So two places we have uh, breaking down of starch is in the mouth and in the small intestine. Now that one's pretty easy to remember. Pancreatic comes from the pancreas. Amylase, it's an enzyme, ascending, breaks down amylose, sugar, or starch into sugar. And then we have further enzymes that break down the uh, broken down starch into smaller pieces, disaccharide, dases that break down the 
disaccharides into monosaccharides. Now, you can kind of figure that out. Saccharide, that means sugar, that's a carbohydrate. Ace, enzyme. Di, that means it's a two-sugar molecule that's going to be broken down into one sugar. For protein digestion, uh, now some of these, yeah, this is where you don't have to have everything memorized, but I do want to point them out. So for any kind of test that we have coming up, I'm not going to test you on this stuff over here. However, trypsin, chymotrypsin, peptidases, the prefix pep means protein. So if you take an AP exam and you see pep, see the pep there, pep there, pep there. If it's not pepsin in the stomach, then it's all in the small intestine, and that's all you have to know about that. The most of the protein digestion that happens happens in your small intestine, though some of it also happens in your stomach. Then we have nucleic acids. If you remember, nucleic acids include DNA and RNA. DNA and RNA are chains of nucleotides, and we could break those nucleotides off using nucleases. Nucleases break down DNA and RNA into monomers. And then we have nucleotidases that break off the uh, nucleotides, uh, nitrogenous base from the bases on the side. And then we have nucleosidases that can break it down even further. The sugar and phosphate can be broken down. All right, so if it says nucleo and then ace in it, it's only going to be involved in the small intestine, and we can break down that DNA. Once we have the DNA completely broken down, we can use it for other things. We can use the phosphate for phospholipid membranes. We can use the sugars for uh, energy. Uh, any kind of whole food is going to have DNA in it if it's not been processed, even some that has, but we don't uh, do anything with it other than use the building blocks for our own DNA and other materials that we need. Then we have fat digestion. There's only two things involved with fat digestion. Bile salts are produced by the liver and stored in the gallbladder. These are going to emulsify. There's a key word there, emulsify. Basically, we're surrounding the fat droplets with these uh, bile salts to increase surface area for the enzyme to work on it better. And the enzyme that breaks down lipids is called lipase, and that's active in the small intestine. All right, so this is going to take you a while, so let's go ahead and review this. Salivary amylase. Mouth, only place that we have chemical digestion is uh, of starch. Stomach, it's only pepsin for proteins. It's the first place proteins get broken down. And for nucleic acids and fat digestion, that starts in the small intestine. We further break down starches in the small intestine, in the lumen. We further break down proteins in the small intestine. And we completely break down DNA and fat in the small intestine as well. All right, the liver has many functions of body. It's uh, involved with production of bile, and we do need to write this down, bile. When we talk about uh, excretion, we're going to talk about how um, liver detoxify ammonia and makes it into something less toxic called uh, urea. However, that's coming up uh, later. So make sure you have that down, bile produced by the liver. And bile is going to emulsify, act like a detergent for fats and surround the fat droplets, making it easier for it to be broken down. All right, this ends part four of your notes on chapter 41, Animal Nutrition.